If you've got a model that's made up of triangles and you want to make them quads, you can just go to geometry and quadrify all. You can hide selections within a edit poly. We can go down and we can hide selected. You can unhide all and you can also hide unselected and this will work with all of the sub objects. If you're having trouble selecting an object behind somewhere, you can see that this is highlighted yellow. And if we press tab, then you can select the object behind it. If you want to create objects on top of other objects, you can turn on auto grid. And there you go. You can use X on the keyboard to search all of the actions and apply them. If you turn on save frames with shift F, you can see that we have these black areas and this is what's going to render. We can go to customize preferences and viewports. And if we turn off mask viewport to safe area, we still have our safe frames where we can see everything either side. So if you've got groups in groups in groups, you go to group, ungroup, and you've still got groups in there, you can just go to group and explode and that will ungroup everything from within that group. The typology dialog lets us rework a object's mesh into procedurally generated patterns. With an object selected, we'll add elip poly and we'll go to polygon and generate typology. And we'll see this dialog box so we can select some of these and it's going to create the pattern. So if I undo that, some of them requires an edge to be selected. So let's select an edge and then we could change that into brick or control Z and we'll make it hexagons. And then what we can do, let's hide unselected and I'll just zoom in. We can select all of the faces and we could add a bevel. And if we do it by polygon, and we bring them in a little bit and pull it out. This can be a really good way to make tiles or brickwork or whatever you need. So I imagine that you know if you go to display, you can hide geometry this way, you can hide cameras, lights, etc. If you press Shift G for geometry, it's going to hide the geometry. A Shift L will hide the lights, so you can toggle them on and off. And the same goes for C with cameras and also S for shapes. If we go over to the modifier tab, we can go to configure modifier sets. And in here, we can add as many buttons as we like. So say we want to add four buttons and I use edit poly all the time. Let's add a UVW unwrap. So you can just press the letter of what you're looking for and that will always take you to whatever it starts with that letter. And then we can put in UVW unwrap. If we want to save this, we can just type in whatever we want to save it as and we'll hit save. So we'll hit OK. And then back over here, we can turn on Jake. Let's make sure show buttons are on. And now we have these buttons here. So we can quickly add UVW maps or edit polys. If you're searching in the modifier list, you can always type what you're looking for in here and then hit enter and it's going to add it as well. All right, selections. If we double click an edge, it's going to select a loop. If we select an edge and press OL, it's going to select the loop. If we select an edge and we press OR, it's going to select a ring. If we select an edge and press control page up, it's going to grow. And if we press control page down, it's going to shrink the selection. If we've got an edge selected and we use the button here, it's going to select the ring. If we've got an edge selected, we can use these arrows to move the selection around in the ring. If we hold control, it's going to select more than one, hold alt, and it's going to start removing them. And the same goes with the loop. So we can move that around holding control. Alt will remove some of that loop and we can move around the selection. Another quick way to make selections is say we select this loop and we hold control and select polygon, it's going to select all the adjacent polys. And you can do the same thing with control vert and edges. So if you need to select certain edges, for example, you can control click. Cameras. So we can always just create it from a top view, for example, but a better way is to select the angle you want in the perspective and say we want this view we just hit control c on the keyboard and that will create a camera from the view so now we've got the camera view we want and we've rendered it out and the client wants to make some changes but we've accidentally moved our camera in the view so we don't want that to happen so if we go to the top view what we can do is select the camera and a really quick way to select the camera is to click here and wherever you click here, it will only select that thing. So if we choose cameras, it's only going to select the cameras in our scene. So that is a good way to make a selection. And you can also do this with geometry, shapes, and lights, etc. And once that is selected, we could always 
freeze the selection so then it can't be selected and accidentally moved. But the problem with this is if we go to this new camera, when we're in this camera view, we can actually still move the camera around and that's not what we want. So rather than doing that, we'll unfreeze it. Let's select our camera and our target again and we'll go to hierarchy and link info. And if we lock all of these, it's gonna stop our camera from being able to move whether we're in the top view or even if we're in the camera view, we can't move it around. You can use the modifier stack much like you do in Photoshop with adjustment layers. So you can test out multiple designs using the typology tool from earlier. We can have tiles and we can disable it and then show brick instead. So this is like a non-destructive workflow. If we add a new edit poly and let's use crosses, we can just rename stuff in our stack. So we can disable layers rather than just deleting them and we can keep hold of them. You can also copy and paste layers around. So if I wanna use this UV map, I can just go to copy and select a new object and I can paste it and it's gonna copy over the UVW map. And another thing we can do is paste an instance. So any updates I make on this one or any of them will be reflected on all of them. If you press Q on the keyboard, you can select objects. If you press W on the keyboard, it's move. If you press E, it's rotate and R is scale. If you've got an edit poly selected, one will enable verts, two will be edges, three will be borders, four will be faces and five will be elements. And you can press that number again to select and deselect that. I guess you know you can undo and redo here, but if you right click on it, then you can select how far you wanna undo. And if you right click on redo, you can select it all and redo it again. If you've got an edit poly on your model, let's select a vert. And if you press shift B, that's gonna open up the soft selection and you can make changes in here. And this is really good for organic modeling. Scripting is a really easy way to automate repetitive tasks. And it's simpler than you may think. If we open up the scripting listener, I'm just gonna delete what's in there at the minute and we'll create a teapot. We can see that this is what's going on behind the scenes. So this is how you'd create a teapot using a script. So what you can do is just copy that. Let's delete our teapot. If I paste it down here and hit enter, that's how we create a teapot. And then if I delete it and we delete what's in there and let's change the radius to 500 and we'll hit enter and that's gonna create our teapot. And then if we start stacking together multiple actions and save them as scripts, we can automate a lot of repetitive tasks. I've got another video about how we can create a copy and paste script between scenes, so check that out if you like. Everyone seems to hate on the melt modifier, but I quite like it because we can add animations to trees. So let's add that to our tree, and I'm gonna turn on auto key, and we wanna start this quite high so it's in the ground, and then if I put it to 20, and pull it all the way back to zero, and turn off auto key, let's play the animation. And there we have our tree coming in our sink. Another animation we can do is affect an object's visibility. So let's turn on auto key. I'll right click and we'll go to object properties and let's put the visibility to zero. And then I'll move the keyframes to 20 and let's right click objects properties and visibility to one. And let's see how that looks. If you wanna delete some edges from an object, Obviously we can loop select and we hit backspace, it's gonna delete them. But if we go over to the verts, they're still there. So what you can do is hold control backspace and it's gonna delete the edges and the verts as well. In the material editor, if you've got a PSD file in here, you can always right click and hit open. And it's gonna open up your Photoshop file and then you can save it as a PNG and then you can bring your PNG into the material editor. We can plug that into the diffuse and also the opacity. And then rather than having to save a black and white alpha as a separate image, we can just turn on alpha under channel output. If you wanna add people and cars to a scene, you can use populate. And all we need to do is go to create flow and we'll click, if you hold shift, it will draw straight. And this is for our people. So let's just have them on that front corner and we can hit simulate. And when that's done, you'll see you've got people in your scene. So if we hit play, we can see them walking around and then we can update the width of the path. We can change their direction, the amount of people there are. They can move faster. We'll have a few people running. Maybe we'll have more females. 
and then we'll hit simulate again and let's hit play and there they are and there's the guy running if we want to add some cars let's select our road and what we can actually do is let's select the ring and we'll connect them we'll separate them a little bit and we'll use these and what you can do in an edit poly if you've got edges selected is create shape so now we have these two lines here and if we go to civil view we can go to civil view object placement style editor and do we want to use the shape we've currently got selected so we'll say yes and we'll see it up here and then what we want to do is add a new element we'll use the cars and then we want to use all the cars in here so we'll use random objects from the selected category and then we can change the speed of the cars so let's just say they're at like 30 kilometers an hour let's put random station on and then we can select the amount of cars we want so let's just put 10 in for now and we'll hit apply we can see our cars in here driving around you can batch rename objects by selecting them go to tools and rename objects and then we'll just call this books for example and then we'll go numbered and we'll start at one and this is going to rename them in order that we selected them so this one should say books one books two books three and then when it comes to placement you want to use the select and place tool and you can see how easy this is to start placing objects in your scene if we select a face and shift e that's going to be extrude and then if we went down in the edit poly and repeat last we can repeat last and the shortcut for repeat last is semicolon so we can keep pressing that that will work with anything within the edit poly if we press ctrl i it's going to select the inverse and if we come out of polygon mode and we press ctrl i it's going to select the inverse of the selection in the viewport you can select everything with ctrl a and you can deselect everything with ctrl d if you select an object and press ctrl shift a it's going to select all similar objects if you press shift z it's going to undo the viewport change and shift y will redo the viewport change alt a will make an object x-ray and alt q will isolate that object back in the edit poly if we have a face selected we can use ctrl shift b for bevel we can select all our edges with ctrl a and with ctrl shift c that's going to let us chamfer everything if we ring select we can use ctrl shift e to connect all of those edges if we select verts and we use ctrl shift w then we can weld verts and if you want to get rid of this cube in the corner you can use ctrl alt b if you want to resize an object you'll notice that all the textures will stretch out so what you can do is go down to preserve uvs and then when you resize it the textures are going to remain the same if your client decides they want to change all of the chairs in your scene you can use the substitute modifier and pick the object you want to replace it with hit yes and all of our chairs are now replaced you can use something called center point cycle which is alt shift 5 to center your pivot to an object center it to the world and ground it one of my favorite tools is called transform toolbox and this lets you rotate an object by the amount of degrees you specify and it's got tons of other handy tools in here so many that i actually made a whole video on it so go and check it out now